Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, Davros solves the gnome shortage, a sandwich snatching seagull, free parking and a WD-40 base top tip. Now, Lippy. Yes. We have had a missive from Davros, as usual. Yes. Back on emails, which is good. I'd like to see that, and it's getting longer by the week. <laughs> he addresses the gnome shortage mm. that we discussed last week. And he says Davros sees a way out of this. He thinks that the youngsters call it pivoting. In fact, lots of people call it pivoting. Um, I've, I've read a number of business books where they talk about pivoted the business from one thing to another so uh-huh. if something's not working then you you move on to something a bit different so yes a very very common term outside of those that destroy galaxies <laughs> so those furloughed from the hospitality sector can redeploy as gnomes for hire <laughs> no retraining necessary socially distanced and working in the open air perfect just need a red hat false beard and a fishing rod I think you may be stereotyping gnomes there, Davros. Yeah, a little bit. They don't all have fishing rods. (laughs) They don't, no, precisely. Precisely. Not not all of them do. Some of them have wheelbarrows. Mm. Others hold pot plants, that sort of thing. So anyway, I get get what you're going on about. Uh, He finishes with, there needs to be an app to connect the gnome deprived with their dream dwarfish fishing person. Not quite sure what that would entail. It sounds like eBay for gnomes but well possibly possibly but that would do it so we can uh, certainly put you in touch with gardens if you wish to uh, work as a gnome basically uh, he then goes on to say we'll cover davros in one one go i think the bottom brain which we discussed yes last podcast i think but i can't quite yes. remember where there was a theory doing the rounds that dinosaurs such as the brontosaurus may have had a second brain or a nerve cluster that dealt mm. with the motor functions for its hind quarters. And I have heard this before. My cousin was uh, so into dinosaurs, I'm surprised he didn't become a dinosaur specialist, <laughs> a desperate child, paleontologist, that was it. Mm. Um, because he, he knew everything about them. And he'd bang on about um, double brain dinosaurs at, at <laughs> some length. I oh, see. I thought dinosaurs weren't. Oh, no, it was the. the like T-Rexes didn't have a very big brain. Whether it wasn't a big brain compared to the rest of their body. No, I think it was definitely that they were not very intelligent animals. Well, they just needed to eat, roar and scare people, really. Yeah. So possibly didn't need a massive brain. No. Uh, Davros has come up with a 1980s joke, which I'm not going to tell because only you and I will... Not you, Lippy. Only Davros and I <laughs> will understand it. I'm and, still young. Uh, <laughs> Still far too young. And also, he's got a team for his Rounders event. Um, is it not appropriate to I read out? I can't repeat it. This is, a, this is a family show. There is no swear. You'll have to send very, that one through to me. Uh, yes, it was very funny. So, uh, well done. If we were a little more adult, then we would have covered it. But, uh, <laughs> thank you. Please do keep them coming in. Now, you wanted to say something about football, which is something that neither you and I really know anything about. I don't know anything about football, like, at all. Chris watches, he supports Tottenham. So we watch the Tottenham games when they're on telly. Or the more preferable thing that happens is he goes to his parents' house to watch the football um, so that I don't have to. But... I heard on the radio the other day, and I think I was in a bad mood anyway, and it just really irritated me. And I know we don't talk about him and the pandemic uh, much or at all, really, because it's not. So I was listening to the radio, and the next, it was the news on. Some nice stuff had happened on the news, probably. I can't remember the rest of the article, but. Then it said, Champions League final is two English teams. And I was like, oh, that's quite impressive. Because Champions League is is like European, UEFA, whatever. So we've done quite oh, well is to get it? two oh, teams sh- in the final. I assume champ. No, no, no. No, it's the all English... I'm looking at a, an article here. It's the all English Champions League final. And it's due to be played on May the 29th. But Wembley is booked... How? No, so, I don't know. So before 
pre it's before Wembley's been booked. It was going to be happening in Turkey anyway. Oh, okay. So it planned. So the whole all the games are planned out, and the final was going to be on the 29th in Turkey, which, as we know, is a red list country currently. Yes. But why are they now that it's two English teams not moving it back and having it in England? Well, I say Wembley's books. Presumably, they've got some sort of boot fair there. Uh, but I read it shortly after we had this conversation last hmm. week. I found a tweet that said there are some 30,000 daily new COVID cases in Turkey. Turkey is in lockdown and has a nationwide curfew. Our government's advice is against all but essential travel. But let's fly 4,000 Chelsea fans and 4,000 mm-hmm. Manchester City fans to Turkey for a game of football. Well, they've been told... The fans have been told not to go, but they're not like not to go. You're not. Nothing's going to happen if you do go. You've got, just got to do the isolation in the ho- hotel when you come back. Well, it's hardly essential travel, is it? It's ridiculous. I just, I was shocked that they didn't. Why don't they just move it back to England? It's two English teams. They don't have to have it at Wembley. They can have it anywhere. Ah, uh, I think they have. Have they now? Well, that's good news because it really bugged me, and I was thinking I'm sat here wishing that I was gone on a holiday in Turkey. Yes, I think they have. It's in the time, so I've only seen the first bit because it's behind a paywall. But they are suggesting it's not going to happen in Turkey. Well, I think if it did happen in Turkey, there would have been an absolute uproar because that would have just been because of some upper power people making the decision out of stupidity rather than common sense. In the UK, some things are starting to get better with events. So it actually means some people can go. Yes, it probably does, but I think it's fairly limited mm. because we're still in the, well, obviously the next unlockdown, but not the, the final one. So this is from, this is yesterday. This is Wembley Prime to replace Istanbul for all English Champions League final. That makes sense then. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't say what they've done with the boot fair at Wembley though. <laughs> maybe, maybe they've pushed that on. I wonder the what was ha- It was a boot fair at Wembley. I don't know, I'm guessing. Like, what was happening at at Wembley on the 29th of May in the middle of a pandemic, which meant they couldn't book there? Well, places will be opening from the 17th, so you will be able to have people in there, but the capacity is limited. But what that... Yeah, that's what I mean. Nothing that big could have been going on. But it does seem like a bonkers idea. And I think think you're right. The Champions League is not just England. It just happens to be two English Yes. No, it's definitely not just England. It's a European championship that i do know as a fact well knowing nothing about football (laughs) i I couldn't i think it's fifa that are in charge Uh, well they they mentioned uefa uefa's in charge i don't know what the difference is european football association and what's fifa federation uh is this one of these federation international football associations yeah that's french thing a bit like uh the the motorsport one which i can't remember yeah oh good so your blood pressure can go back down again now. yeah good okay i'm really pleased about that because i even text chris straight away being like i don't know if you've heard this but it's actually stupid (laughs) stupid (laughs) not sure he has the power to change it he didn't but i i'm one of those people that if something's annoyed me i need to rant about it yes i I have to get it the end of one of your rants yesterday (laughs) (laughs) i was very angry yesterday yeah, I was in the middle of a nap. Oh. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. So? I've been swimming at half six. It was... Weren't you working? <laughs> <laughs> Work nap. Yes. Well, yeah, well, you've got to... You know, if somebody's chopping down a tree, they take time to sharpen their axe. I take time to resharpen my brain by having oh, a nap. Fair. All right. Next time yes. I'm late to a meeting, I'll use that excuse. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I was sharpening my axe. Anyway, my trawl of the papers over the last week, I found an interesting video of a seagull. Oh, yes. I think I've seen this. Okay, so this is the co-op in Aberdeen, and the locals have named him Gus for some reason. But he's worked out that if he walks up to the doors in a certain place, the doors open because they've got Mm -hmm. an automatic sensor, and he just has enough time to run in grab a sandwich from the chilled cabinet opposite the door and then run out again before the doors close. (laughs) And uh, presumably, though, he's he doesn't realise there's a meal deal because he's only taking the sandwich, whereas if he was to get a snack and a drink, he would probably save a bit of money. I don't think he's he's paying for it in the first place, is he? That's a very good point. Very, very good point. But he's clearly done this a lot. 
Um, mm. We tend to think of birds as being a bit dim, but actually this one has, has sussed that one out very, very well. I think seagulls are quite intelligent. Like, they do aim where they poop as well. I'm sure yes, they, they know yeah. where they're pooping and they know if it's yes. going to hit someone and they do it on purpose. Brighton Seafront in the summer with an ice cream is just pure target Terrifying. practice. Really. Yeah, well, they they swoop and they're gone. We mm. were at um, Portland Bill over last year in the summer and it was a very windy, blustery day. It wasn't um, wasn't sunny and calm as we had hoped. Lots of seagulls there. And of course, there's a we have a lot of people eating outside because of COVID. And chips is a common fare there. And the seagulls are everywhere <laughs> and bombing you. And so you almost have to eat it under your anorak. Yeah. <laughs> so they can't see the chips. So maybe there's a product there is a something that comes over people. So you can still see out, but still consume your food without being attacked by seagulls. I'm sure there must be something like that for people that go hunting. Yeah, be all camouflage there. You'd look a bit silly on the top of Portland Bill with a camouflage sheet over you. <laughs> and you wouldn't have a clear bit at the front because then whoever you were hunting would be able to see uh, you. True. I like you said whoever is if they hunt people. <laughs> well, I don't, well, they might do. They might be paparazzi. <laughs> oh yeah fair point yeah that is a that is i'll, I'll apologize for that because paparazzi do hunt celebrities that are people they do don't they talking of paparazzi i was rather saddened to see they've been hunting damien lewis who lost his wife a couple of weeks ago to oh. cancer and i thought and it's just a bit no don't do it leave the poor no. man alone mm. let him walk his dog in a bit of peace you know he's had a rough old time. And I you know exactly was... what the article will be. It'll be like, first picture of him since yep. his wife passed, looking sad. Like That, that was exactly it. it, it was no exactly one needs it. to see that. No. With with his friend, who turned out to be female, so presumably there'll be a whole load of speculation about that as well. But uh, no. Mm-hmm. I, I, I we would all be better him. off if newspapers didn't exist, magazines didn't exist. Well, don't buy them. That's the thing. Oh, don't, don't buy, buy them. them. And don't watch the programmes. Mind you, here we are, including that piece in our podcast, so that makes <laughs> us just as bad. So the other thing that caught my eye over the last week was a enterprising young student in America mm. who had to pay $250 a year for a parking permit at his college. Seems but a lot. electric vehicles were free. So what he got, he got a, presumably from a well-known online store, a little plastic socket that you use to keep the charging lead in when you're at home for handing yeah. it in. And he glued it onto the side of his Jeep. <laughs> to make it so, look like it was yeah, electric. And, he, and there's a picture. So he rocks up into the electric parking bay, puts the lead into this dead socket mm-hmm. and saves himself $250 a year. Impressive. How long that's going to go on for now it's gone around the internet is another matter. But um, yeah, I, thought I feel like that now that it's out there, it's... It's gonna end quite quickly, but that is. A very I would good have thought so. Saving hack. It is a very good saving, but a little unfair on people who do have electric vehicles and need to charge them. True. It depends how many electrical charging ports they have. Yes, but I say don't do that at home. No. <laughs> and Zoom is the gift that keeps on giving, <laughs> and this <laughs> week's monumental stupidity is a. Uh, Ohio State State Senator called Andrew Brenner, who decided to make a video call or Zoom call while he was driving, Mm. but obviously Mm. thought this through. So he had a background of his house behind him. Quite clever, (laughs) so you could set the background. What he forgot was that he was wearing a (laughs) seatbelt. God, why would you even think to do a Zoom call whilst you were driving? Uh, Yeah, I I mean, uh, telephone call is distracting enough. Let alone a Zoom call. They must have noticed he wasn't really looking at the camera either. Uh, You would have thought so, wouldn't you? Looking all over the place. And not to mention the noise as well, unless you're constantly muting the microphone. Mm. But you've got to take your hands off the wheel to do that. I don't believe there's a car in the world that has Zoom controls on the steering wheel. Not yet, no. No, well, hopefully not ever. Well, it should never be. Well, it'll be driving itself by the time you can do a Zoom call. Yeah, well, that's that's some debate, isn't it? There was a horrendous accident a couple of weeks ago, and somebody lost their lives. Oh, with lost their lives. driving-less car? Well, they thought it was a driverless car, which is not. It's a driver-assist car. 
Uh, um, those really confuse me, drive assist cars. Yes, I don't. I've had one once when you were skiing at a Mitsubishi. That and it just drives something. straight. No, I mean, this is quite a long while ago, so it would it would warn you if you started to cross lanes without indicating. And I can't remember how it did it. A friend of mine had a, I think it was a Citroen, and that would pull the seatbelt if you tried to do that. Mm. Oh, so it's like my car that when I reverse it beeps when I'm getting too close. Sort of, yeah. I've worked out I can get pretty much to a flat line beep before I hit anything. Yeah, is it affected by dirt on me? No. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. So our recommendation is not to take part in a zoom call when driving definitely not and certainly don't take your seat belt off so that you look like you're in <laughs> so you don't look like you're driving <laughs> yeah that, that'd be that'd be bonkers anyway last weekend we had the jigsaw run at dunsfold yes aerodrome which had been moved twice since november last year mm. and this year was a bit of a bonus or last year it'd been a bit of a bonus as uh, we were expecting there to be houses being built which doesn't seem to be happening at the moment. So, mm. And apparently the the whole site is up for sale, obviously with planning permission. Mm. Um, there are rumours that it might be kept as a film set, which would be quite nice. So they we, do use that a lot as a film set, don't they? More than you realise. Yeah, the list, actually, if you look on their slightly archaic website, the list of films and programmes mm. is, is quite long. It was one of, the, one of the Mission Impossibles was there, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. Um oh, runs and jumps on the side of the plane. I believe some of Casino Royale was filmed there as well, some of the scenes. Uh, turned it into Miami Airport. And of course, with CGI, you can add all sorts of things mm. in. But one of the big advantages of the that area is there's nothing on the skyline. No. The date set is all, all very clear. But apparently Amazon are filming something, I can't remember the name the guy said, in one of the jets that's there so they've got a number of jets that don't go anywhere yeah Yeah, they've free just chilling just chilling uh two of the last 747s uh were flown in there i think we covered it on this at the end of last year and uh skid marks are still on the runway interestingly yes landing yeah, so one of uh, one of my Lion colleagues is uh, into aircraft in a big way, and he was pointing them out. Um, <laughs> and we also found, which I hadn't seen before, despite having a small workshop on there many years ago, there's a massive piece of thick metal just to the side of the runway on, on the concrete there. And that's where they used to test the Harrier jump jets, because if you did it on the tarmac, the tarmac would melt oh, God. due to the heat. So they had to do it on, on a big on bit of, of metal. They, yeah, they take off from an aircraft carrier, which is made of metal, not tarmac. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, very interesting. So that was that was quite good to stand on that mm. and pontificate about. Pretend, <laughs> Pretend to be a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, the day went quite well. They had two races instead of one. 500 runners across the two, which is good. Yeah, it's a good, good, raises good money for the school, which mm. specialises in children and, and young adults with autism. Mm. Um, very well regarded. It's been there quite a long while. Unfortunately, the first group of runners that set off seemed to be ignoring every sort of advice being given by the organisers, who pleaded with them not to bunch up. About 20 of them decided to leave at the same time to begin with and decided not to run down the runway as directed, but round the perimeter track. <laughs> So and we so were marching right. at that point, and they ran straight past us. And I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. So I, for some re- reason, have been given a radio. So I got on the radio to race control. They're, they're running around the perimeter. Oh, no, they shouldn't be doing that. So we started shouting at people to go down the runway. Would they listen? No. Not a chance. No, it took an awful lot of screaming and waving and basically walking in front of people to get them to start going down the runway. It's crazy. Mm. And that event's been running for 10 years. Yeah, we've even run it. We have run it. And we won't talk about the ending <laughs> i still think your race was more dramatic than that it was a little bit yes yes it was a little bit well we'll, we'll talk about that one day so i would imagine there was some quite angry very keen runners at the mm. end of it but as the race director said it's their problem we said yeah, they didn't map. listen we've we've spoken to them and obviously one decided they were going to go that way and they all followed uh, a little bit like sheep, really. So, but we had all sorts of weather. We had rain, we had sunshine. I came back with a burnt forehead. 
Oh, it damn. Was, yes, very interesting morning. Yeah, it has very been a bit of everything, indeed. the weather recently, hasn't it? It's not consistent. It's not... Also, this time last year, I was sat in the garden most days. Yes. It was well, boiling. It was, yeah, it was glorious when the day lockdown was announced. Yeah, really yeah. Really through to the end of August. Mm, from the day I lost my job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Yes, and it's the complete opposite now. Yeah. Yes, our beach hedge at the front has um, had quite a shock because it started to come, the leaves started to come out, and then it's uh, it's just stopped. Oh. Uh, uh, it's restarted again, now it's got a bit warmer, but there's big holes in it, which is a bit odd. But anyway, enough of that. And the Screaming Tomato got in touch, uh, following on from us talking about people arguing mm. and not seeing other people's perspective. And he reminded me of a, an effect called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is a type of cognitive bias in which people believe they are smarter and more capable than they really are. And it's quite easy to be quite offended by this, to be honest. So I'm <laughs> treading very carefully. And the best explanation I, I found was this. The phenomenon is something you have likely experienced in real life perhaps around a dinner table at a holiday family gathering. Why they talk about family, I don't know, but I suppose you get all sorts, really. Throughout the course of the meal, a member of your extended family, oh, now we've got the indoors in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> begins spouting off at a topic at length, boldly proclaiming that he is correct, or she is correct, and that everybody else's opinion is stupid, uninformed, and just plain wrong. It may be plainly evident to everyone in the room that this person has no idea what he or she is talking about, yet he or she prattles on, blithely oblivious to their own ignorance. Interesting. We've all come mm. across people like that, and I just hope I'm not one of them. I mean, I feel like I am sometimes. But I'm not, because I actually do know what I'm talking about, so it's not... Yeah, so I think we've all got the potential to do that. And the problem is, if, you, if you're very passionate about a subject... Mm. Yeah, gets worse it, yeah it gets worse yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely. very it, it's an interesting thing but i would um I, I wouldn't necessarily take it at face value and assume that everybody's like that mm. i discovered some years ago that everybody's perception on life is different and after doing that things became a lot easier to be honest it's just live and let live i would agree and also i feel like it winds people up more if you just agree with them it can do or just say nothing yeah that just say, oh, that's a good opinion for you to have. And then just don't say anything else after that. A friend of mine used to, um, in meetings, he would diffuse situations by going, mm, you've got a very good point. I'll, I'll need to think about that. And then, obviously. Never think about it ever again. And talking about talking with people, there's a very good book called Never Split the Difference by yes. Chris Voss. I've uh, half read it. You've half read it. Well, I definitely read the other half. Uh, Chris Voss was a... Well, he was a policeman to begin with, American policeman, and joined eventually joined the FBI, FBI in the hostage negotiation team. Mm. And his story about how he fought his way in there is quite interesting yeah. because he was completely underqualified for it. And he takes you through a journey, and he illustrates it with real-life examples as well on how to negotiate with people. And it is quite an eye-opener because the way that we tend to do it is probably not the most effective and you yeah. have to be a little bit selfless, to be honest, to do it. But remembering what you want at the end, what the goal is, rather than how you position yourself throughout the negotiation. Mm. So if you get the opportunity to read it, it's a very good book. It's quite, it is a very quite, good book. Quite a, quick, quite a quick read unless you're lippy. When it's you a very, read it over several years. It's, it's a good book for if you if you want something or trying to like get a pay rise or your trying to get a new job and you're like negotiating packages and what you get with the new job i feel like if you're just a normal person happy with where you are in life then it's probably not a book for you although it has to be said it is an interesting read and yeah. actually the, the his story is very interesting a, a brilliant and how they bought negotiate well hostage negotiations to an end mm. uh, some of them successfully there is one very funny story in the middle about uh somebody in central america who was kidnapped and one of Good start. one of well hilarious <laughs> but one of the key things he says is to keep asking questions say how can i do this if this so how can i pay that that money when i don't have 
Mm. How can I pay your ransom if I don't have that money? And eventually, they just wound them down. And, mm. the, and the number of guards reduced dramatically until there was just one left, and the hostage escaped. Yeah. Just appeared at home. But they just wore them down. And the other problem was is that where they were keeping him, there was nowhere near a phone. So the, the communicator had to walk into the village to use the phone, take the message, go back again to get the answer, then come back again. So yeah. it's, just, it's just a nightmare <laughs> set up. Obviously pre-burner phones. Mm. Well, I've, I've watched a very good episode of Grey's Anatomy, actually, where there, well, there's a gunman in the hospital. And what you should do is just start telling them personal things about you because it'll make them feel bad. If they feel like they know who you are, they're oh, less see, likely yes. to, yeah. to keep bouncing back because they feel bad about what they're doing if they actually yeah. know who you are. So if you get kidnapped, yes, true. just start telling them stuff about yourself. Yes. And like yeah. meaningful things like you've got a kid. I, I have a feeling if fans. you were kidnapped, you would become unkidnapped quite quickly. I... I feel like that's probably what would happen. <laughs> they, after about 10 minutes, they'll be like, oh, let's just put her back. <laughs> 10 minutes? Crikey. Well, I think it'd take 10 minutes to, for the situation to have settled and then for me to start being annoying. So, what news from the house move? Oh, uh, people are stupid. Well, they're not. Well, they kind of are. It's just, they're annoying. It's been a very frustrating two weeks. So we're basically there with our new mortgage and the actual sale itself um, to the point where I was talking to this solicitor um, the other day and she said, yeah, we think we're like two, three weeks away from com- exchange. She said, with the possibility of completing on the same day. Oh, OK. So we're very close and before the 30th of June, which is the ideal. But... We, at the start of the process, told the solicitors we need them to do our remortgage as well. So that, And we got told by two separate people, yeah, that's fine, they'll just do it along the same side. Like, we'll do it, we'll do it for you as well, that's fine, it'll just run along at the same time. And then that was the last we heard of it until our case got allocated to a person to go through the last stages. And she sent a message with a few questions So I thought I'll ring her because it's easier to to chat about them rather than try and type them back. And then at the end, she was like, oh, actually, whilst I've got you on the phone, who's doing your remortgage? And I was like, you're doing my remortgage. (laughs) And she was like, oh, it's a different part of the company. And we were like, "Okay, that's fine. She was like, I'll get the inquiry over and someone will contact you as soon as possible. Two weeks later... And I don't know how many emails and messages it got to the point where we spoke to the estate agent who's friends with the owner of the company and he had to get involved in order for them to just send us our initial information. Good grief. But they were doing so well. And this girl that's doing our other side is so good and so lovely and like really proactive and like constantly giving us updates they've just completely let themselves down with this other part of the company and it's absolutely awful so that started monday officially which is yesterday and since then it's just question after question of stupid things that they should know or they shouldn't even ask us they should be asking our case handler for the other half of it because she's the one they should be liaising with on it not us Sounds like somebody lost a file. It, yeah, I feel like that's what's happened. Or they kind of told a slight fib about how the companies were connected. Yeah, maybe. Because they have different names, for one. Okay. And for two, we had to give them her information. And we were like, well, surely you should just have that on the system mm. if you look up our names. Because we thought we went with you thinking you were linked. Either the same company or side-by-side companies. So... Oh, well, that's quite annoying. It's moving again. We were both very frustrated yesterday with that. Just because we've been so quick at everything else and now yeah. it's to do with us that's holding it up and it's getting really annoying. We're like, yes, yeah, oh, yeah. it's yeah. not our fault, but it's our fault that it's slowed down it's, again. Well, it's our side. It's not yeah. our fault. It's, yeah. exactly. Oh, well, hopefully that will resolve itself this week. Yeah, ho- well, yeah, we get, because get the on. initial email was 
it will take four to six weeks. To which our response was, no, it'll be less than four weeks because you've the one that's been delaying us. We, it's not our fault that you took two weeks to come back to us after three months yeah. of us thinking that it was going ahead. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Exchanging and completing on the same day is a little bit of a, a worry. I suppose if you haven't got a move on that day as well, we probably the aim is not to move on the completion yeah. day i think i think the aim would be to go and have a walk around the house and yeah. see what's been left if anything has been left and maybe do a clean see what condition they leave it in kind of thing is what we would like to do on the completion day rather yeah. than actually move because i feel like that would just be way too stressful to trying to do exchange completion all in the same day yes absolutely move. i did that on a flat i had uh, but I moved into rented, so it wasn't. So there was a bit of an overlap, so there wasn't really a problem with it. But yeah, she was saying if we have enough time before the exchange date, they might as well make it the completion date because yeah. our sellers aren't having to move into a house. So it's yeah, not absolutely. that we can exchange and then we just need to wait for them to exchange mm. so that we can all have completion dates. It's that we're exchanging for them to then move into their parents' yeah. house. So it's not. Yeah, as long as they've got their stuff out of the house, that's. Which I drove past the other day and there were boxes in the window. Yes, you said, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, when we moved into this house, um, having had a bit of a nightmare trying to pack up stuff in the old house, because there isn't a road that was by it, you had to walk it across the common land to get to the yeah. track here, basically. And being an old cottage, you had to take stuff out the window, so all the window <laughs> frame had to come out. So we arrived at this place, uh, in, it was in November at four o'clock, it was a horribly wet, cold day, and the bloke was still packing up. And eventually we got him out and gave us a set of keys which didn't fit the house. So, yeah, we had to go and change the locks the following day. And then we opened cupboards and it's full of his stuff. Went up in the loft, there's a whole load of stuff up there. Mm, that's so annoying. I really hope that it's, doesn't happen to us. Well, well, if it does, you know, you take it out and you put it on the driveway. And I, I phoned him and said, you know, you still your stuff here. And he went... Oh, uh, yeah, I'll come and pick that up next weekend. I said, no, no you I said, won't. I'm going to put it in the car now and I'll drive it around and dump it off at your house. I'm not having it. You know, it's not, not on. It's got a cover full of medicines. I don't want that. Either you take it tomorrow or it goes in the bin. Yeah, that will be my response is either you come and get it now or I'm throwing it out. Yeah, quite. Anyway, hopefully it won't come to that. Yeah. So, is there a lippy top tip? Um, let me think. If not, I've got a grumpy top tip. Oh, yes. Let's do a grumpy top tip. Let's do a grumpy top tip. So I cut myself shaving this morning, which I don't do very often. I just thought you had a big spot, to be fair. I just didn't mention it. it. (laughs) No, it is. um, It's it's rather grown. And it bled profusely as well, as they tend to do. Now, many years ago, when I was at the car show and preparing to commentate for the day, I'd stayed in the camper van overnight on the showground and decided to have a shave in the morning and, and cut myself, and it would not stop bleeding. And one of my fellow lions came over. He said, um, oh, stick a bit of WD-40 on it. I went, what? Yeah, WD-40. So I went and saw the sound about it. You only WD-40? He went, yeah, yeah. So he sprayed a bit on the tissue, stuck it on there, took it away, stopped bleeding instantly. That's weird. It is a little weird, but when you consider the major ingredients in wd-40 is baby oil and vaseline oh it all makes sense it does make sense i was thinking that stuff that stuff smells potent i wouldn't want to put it on my face yeah it's it's absolutely fine i mean the 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 lion said it was going to sting a bit which it didn't so but so yeah so top tip if you cut yourself shaving little double of wd-40 mind you maybe that's why it looks like a major spot yeah, yeah, I did. I was just being polite and I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, it is quite quite big. I, yeah, I think it was quite a big slice, actually. Yeah, it looks looks kind of painful. So can I go into my fun fact now? Oh, yeah, go on there. You're double, doubling up this weekend. Yeah. This weekend? Yeah. Weekend. Well, I don't weekend, know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, so this is another fact that I've has been unsubstantiated. A little bit like last week's one where we talked about the ceremony of quit rents but i have done a little bit of research into it and it is in fact true mm. so this is where a blunt knife and a sharp knife six horseshoes and 61 nails pass so that's hands exactly between. what they get 
That's exactly what they get. And the City of London pay that to the Crown. Apparently what happens is the Crown then lend them back said knives, horseshoes and nails for next year. So it's all a bit bonkers, really. But I found a link to a very historic website, so I shall Interesting. add that. Anyway, on to this week's fun fact. Yes. A man in China mm-hmm. bought a first-class, fully refundable plane ticket, which gave him access to the airport's VIP lounge, where high rolling travellers can dine for free. Oh, no God, I can see there. where this is going. Yeah. The man rescheduled his first class ticket 300 times in one year to enjoy free meals. That's... That's smart, isn't it? That is so clever. That's that's smarter than the fake huh. plug socket. Yeah, because like, yeah. they can't do anything about that. Well, they did. When the airline figured out his scheme and confronted him, he cancelled the ticket and got a full refund. <laughs> So he didn't pay for his ticket and he got 300 free meals in one year. Yep. I reckon that's good food as well if it's first class VIP. Oh, I would think so, yeah. Yes, I think it would be very good food. So, that uh, is genius. It is genius and I wonder if you can do it anymore. Probably not. I feel like you have to give at least 24 hours notice. Of what? Of moving, rescheduling. Uh, possibly, yeah. But That is a great plan. Yeah, he must have rescheduled it at the last minute, I actually think. About to it. get in, he would have had to reschedule yeah. it on the day. Who knows how that worked? But Crazy. Um, yeah, good. Or maybe because you're allowed to arrive at the airport twenty, you can go to the airport. If he's not got to check in, you can just go through security. Uh, very possibly, yeah. So or probably maybe not just even went that, like the day actually. before. Possibly, yeah. But three hundred times. I mean, ticket. that's basically a year's worth of food he's blagged there. That is really impressive. In one year as well. He must yeah. have just been like, okay, I'm going to reschedule this flight for tomorrow, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then come back. Yeah, it must That's have been, ridiculous. Pretty much. Yeah, it is. Yeah, just had a couple of holidays in between. I really want to try that. You don't live in China, though. I don't live in China. And the food, like the, I feel like the airports here aren't as impressive as other places. Like the one in, is it Singapore? That has like a fountain in the middle of, like waterfall in the middle of the airport mm, don't know but that sounds quite picturesque it's very extravagant the one in singapore i believe the problem i've had with airports particularly once you're past security is either they're so rubbish a bit like the one in um, Rhodes was was dreadful <laughs> mind you they were there's major building works going on mm. or it's so fantastic that i just have to keep wife of grumpy away from any of the expensive stuff and shops <laughs> Like the one in Geneva. Uh, Geneva Airport, need to keep her away from that. I, we went through there once. I think a lot of it was closed. It was quite late at night. Mm. There's a really lovely fish bar, fish and champagne bar, which I've never treated myself to because I can't afford that. But. Oh, I know what you mean, yes. So we, we ate at a restaurant at one end because the rugby was on. I remember that. Yes. I lived in Geneva Airport for a year, basically. What, I'd been a, there a meal so... deal first class ticket? <laughs> I'd been there so many times in one year. And my, uh, one, I was there for like eight hours once because my flight just kept getting delayed. Mm. That was fun. That's always fun. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. Goodbye.